The bankers are now the bank robbers. All the money at the top, little to the bottom. America is run by economic vandals and financial fraudsters. American law is in the hands of bank robbers, they are not accountable to anyone. The banks do not even print money. It is all digital money backed by nothing and printed on nothing. It is all one big scam. They are addicts, and addicts will do anything to keep their high going. They are gamblers. They want to keep their casino running. The bankers will keep injecting more monetary methadone to keep them alive and moving. But they are really dead. They come up with different scams to keep this thing going. The Fed must lie about real inflation. If they admit that real inflation is over 5%, then it takes 10 years to inflate away half of your wealth. People who think they are going to retire are going to have a severe wake-up call. The real inflation of all the money created after 2008 is just now coming home to roost, and that isn't even counting all the offshore dollars from the petrodollar. As other countries use other currencies, those dollars will go home as well. Inflation in the next 20 years will be crushing. Learn to grow a garden. A big garden. And buy some silver and gold. Anything that will maintain its value. The storm is in the mail. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. We are living in a system of the banks, by the banks and for the banks, and that is the reality. They spent all that money to save the banking system, and the biggest travesty is, not one person of any stature went to prison for the fraud against the American taxpayer, not one. At least GWB sent Kenny Boy Lay, Jeffrey Skilling, and others to jail for what they did to Enron and especially to the people of California with those phony rolling blackouts. And when are heads going to roll for this hoax of Russia collusion and now Ukraine scandal? I am sick, just like half the country, of all the disappointments in investigation outcomes that result in no indictments. Had any of us peasants have done these crimes against a lawfully elected president, we'd be tried already and either locked up for life with no parole ever or dead from a firing squad. The central banks get power from billionaires that control the two political parties. The billionaires own the Fed. So they are forcing the Fed to hyperinflate and lower rates. The US government has sold its population to private corporations, the prison industry needs new inmates perpetually. I am waiting for the government to make being in debt for too long a crime, or non-payment defaults get three months in prison, or you can opt to do jail time to clear your debt. Billionaires have little to worry about if there is a peasant insurrection, residing behind their fortress-walled mansion, they'll just bring in the military and militarized police in to protect by slaughtering off the fodder. A strong economy, says President Trump. Why then the hell is all the trucking companies going bankrupt? Why did the Fed cut rates? Why are they bailing out the banks with repo? Greatest economy ever, not. Meanwhile, millions of Americans living paycheck to paycheck, no health care, homeless, etc. completely out of touch and incorrect. Is Trump not embarrassed at the 196 daily tweets about a new great major super uber trade deal just hours away? Rinse and repeat day in and day out. A Twitter economy is a unique global phenomenon. We are in a simmering sovereign debt crisis that is about to become very obvious in 2020. The reason we don't have real inflation, even though we're at full, or historically low unemployment, is because everyone is overlooking the debt bubble. At every level, government, corporate, and consumer, we have record debt, and thus, record debt service is at all-time highs. So even though you're making as much money as ever, what you have left over as discretionary, is the same or lower, because more dollars are going towards servicing debt. Which is basically a black hole, it's money that you're obligated to pay, for a benefit that you've already received in the past. Every time you borrow, especially to consume or purchase a depreciating item, you're pulling forward future production and savings, plus costs of interest. Both the unemployment rate and inflation rate in the United States are well over 20% each. All the statistics are lies. The banks took over government long ago. It was bankers and lawyers who wrote the Constitution. Your average thief, including banks and foreign-owned U.S. politicians, will steal more and more from you until you force them to stop. These thieves will never voluntarily stop stealing. Unless you choose to stop them, they will take everything. And in fact not only have they taken absolutely everything they have been borrowing in your name and stealing that too. So $500 billion needed from Fed to repo market in the next two weeks to avoid bank collapse. Fed debt balance sheet now $4.5 trillion. This goose is cooked man. 
It's game over as in checkmate. Trump will not survive what's coming. The Fed is slated to pump an additional 500 billion into the banking markets through early next year. This is it folks. And most people still don't realize what is happening and how bad this coming collapse is really going to be. The larger banks can't handle their insolvency among themselves. Instead, they have to go to the Fed, which simply prints the money to fund their overnight repo operations. Also, is anybody watching the USA's defeat in the trade talks with China? Trump will try to spin this as a good thing for America, but the fact of the matter is that we no longer call the shots, China does. The mask will come off more and more as China gains new ascendancy over the United States. The actual long-term ramifications of this are simply too unthinkable for most people to grasp fully. China leading the world versus the USA leading the world are two totally different ideologies. One is based on totalitarianism and coercion, and the other one is based on freedom and individual liberty. This will not be like driving on the left side of the road as opposed to the right side. And this won't be just another economic recession or even depression, but one where those who think they are positioned to make a profit may, in fact, also be destroyed. There are ghastly times ahead for the United States. And to those who out of their own ignorance sing of the joys of China you will rudely awaken. The Fed is expected to lower rates after having deprived savers of a reasonable return on their hard-earned financial resources for years in order to compensate for and support the risk-taking behaviors of market players. Those mostly responsible for the current economic debacle that exists. This is neither normal nor equitable. Lots of anger out here in the real world. The Fed is powerless. Unless it's QE for the people. Time to go all in on gold silver and mining royalties. If the Fed cuts rates to zero, then we stop being the cleanest dirty shirt and foreign investors flee. With low interest rates, the banks are already operating on razor-thin margins due to low interest rates. If you are on razor-thin margins, and the defaults start to pick up, the banks can be in a lot of trouble fast. There is already some evidence that either a large bank or banks are experiencing liquidity problems, due to the continuous and ever-increasing repo operations. If banks start going belly up, what does that do to the confidence that the public puts in banks keeping their money intact? And we all know that our whole system is based on full faith and trust. Confidence crashes, the system crashes. Debt will matter to the consumer, who is 70% of the economy. The consumer is tapped out with interest rates so low for so long. Now they're having trouble paying the interest to forget the principal. The next couple of years is going to be a ride, especially if MMT kicks in on top of the permanent repo bailouts. If everyone would understand that our money is always born as a debt at source, then we would operate a system where we allow money to die as debt, not by being paid down, but by being written down via payoff with money created as us. This is what happens when it is born as debt. It is merely created at the ledger. Then the laws allow the money to be owned by that bank who can then take the real asset, the land, and the houses. When the inevitable effort to pay down such created debt is not possible due to economic restraints born in society such as no waged income available. Only subsidized made-up jobs by the government via corporations are available stealing everybody's lifetimes. Massive rounds of quantitative easing only made the rich richer. They did nothing for 98%. The bond market will kill municipalities raising taxes to the inability to pay the debt. Example, Detroit bonds overtook taxes to pay the debt back when auto manufacturers went bankrupt, and government takeover led to them not having to pay taxes. The loser Detroit in pensions. It's a con game. The banks know that economic collapse is inevitable. So does the US military. The sum of all fears is the tsunami of debt needed to protect private and public malinvestment in financial rather than productive endeavors. The market needs higher clearing charges due to supply and demand imbalances. Papering over the swamp makes the alligator meaner and not any easier to contain. I wish everyone a little part of the trillions in bailouts spanning the globe. All this money printing is technically implementing after the fact of slavery. When people begin to say, no more, and refuse to allow themselves to be used to serve the dark fosses agendas, then things will change. This is where we are, looking at the problems created and searching for solutions. It's time to outsmart those who do not have our best interest at heart. The reason for the creation of credit unions was to give individuals control over what happens to their money. 
and I have been informed that there are banks established that do not have connections to federal banks in the stock market. The dark forces have been trying to outlaw the credit unions because their plan to economically destroy our once great divinely inspired nation cannot succeed if people are not tied to the large banks and corrupted stock market. Donald Trump said he would control the tyrannical Fed. But the real political theater is that Donald Trump was chosen by the deep state to be their controlled opposition. Everything takes place in this never-ending political theater slowly because the script is written in episodes as things develop, and agents of the deep state have to coach the players before they act day by day to ensure they play their parts convincingly. It makes great entertainment for the masses and journalists. Thomas Jefferson once said, I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. Invest in wheelbarrows, and in wheelbarrow insurance. The stock market keeps on up and up, regardless of the underpinning factors of the economy. However, one day, the laws of economic reality will set in. It's all up to the Fed and bankers, as long as the Fed continues to keep rates low and lend monies to the banks, the banks continue to borrow and extend credit to consumers. And no matter how much debt we get we will continue to spend. Most of my friends have a lot of credit card debt, but they are still having Christmas parties and using plastic money to have a very merry Christmas, and as usual, they say I am worried about nothing. Keep saving and stacking. I will. And I'm giving silver to my family for Christmas. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. And subscribe. Thank you.